For us to understand the methods, we have to, uh, to get a clear picture of the positions in the of the Hawaii. Because we are considering a scenario in which you are there, we are somewhat far, uh, uh, at medium to far distance to each other initially. So please, you are standing. You do any Kamai you want, a closed Kamai, very nice. And I am in this Kamai, say, myself, if I am a football practitioner. So, uh, it is first based on the, uh, uh, the defined scenario of a confrontation. Then there is a posture. Then there is movement. Okay? So, um, what are the postures that we can have? What are the kamai, the non kamai, or the, the kamai that are part of kopojutsu? And we see that um, in kopojutsu, the main, the main kamai that is studied is this. And people see this kamai and think, but this looks like kumiuchi, but it's somewhat different. But as a matter of fact, this cannot be kumiuchi. And uh, what is? What are the rules? What are the? Uh, why? Why? You know, in, in in short words, is this kamai here? Why is this part of kokujutsu? Well, the idea is that there are two two good reasons for having this kamai, this position, as we can see. First of all, is that to uh, to take out sword angles. We have to remember that. We're talking about a period of many centuries in Japan, um, you know, in, in which sword uh, was the main weapon. So the idea is that, so please, take a sword so we can see. Suppose you're in Sega no Kamai. Okay, now suppose I'm in Jujutsu, in a Jujutsu Kamai. So I'm here. Okay? So what, what we see is this distance, this amount of distance that I have here, um, is a possibility for him to reach hands, arms, and so on. And when I'm here, because we do, st we do study Shinken Shira Hadori, the, the study of how to design, how to take the sword out of a Kenshi, but we also do know that um, from the point of view of experience, it is very difficult if you are in front of an experienced Kenshi to take his sword out. It is very difficult. We do study this as a method and as a, a way of um, last resource, let's say, because this would happen frequently in ancient Japan. Now, once we are here, once I'm here, you can easily, please, can easily come for, for hand, and then for arm, and especially for the, um, for some kosa angles, which are the diagonal angles, say, even without um, stepping forward. In the same place, you can come easily for arm, and it's difficult for me to take arm off take arm out, sorry, from here. So, they saw that they could easily uh, attempt to reduce the volume, your body volume, from, the, from your enemy's perspective by putting your, your closed hands close to your forehead and then bringing your elbows inward like this. In second place, there is also the explanation. Um, I, I remember, I don't know, about uh, 12 years ago or something like that, I was in, in the dojo with Chido Shijuelo Augusto, 
My master and we were, we were discussing Kopo Jutsu theories, Jujutsu and Kopo Jutsu theories, and then he taught me and showed me that um, some, sometimes, or there is the thought, the explanation that Kopo practitioners would bring their hands towards their forehead to align their arms with their kabuto. Because when you are in a jujutsu position, you have to have your arms like this, so you, you may structure yourself properly. But when you are like this, you have this shoulder high. Your shoulders are naturally higher than if you are in a natural position, so you can support this posture and the weight of your arms and your arms them, themselves. And you are also ready to support any kind of attack with the tips of your body. So this could make it quite uncomfortable and quite difficult to move and to act when you have a whole tikabuto um, and you know, all the, the yoroi parts. Of course, considering there are uh, many types, there are some kinds of yoroi. So the idea was to align with the tabuto and reduce the volume of your body. Now, uh, besides that, there is something very uh, important to to realize when you are in the Kopo Jutsu Kamae. The idea is that whenever, whenever I have to apply power, I have to deal with any with some extremity of the body, with an end. Now, say I'm using my hand, I can say this is a plier for the matter of our study here. Okay. But now, if I take out the pliers, and I have these supports, something must make up for that. I have to I have to have a compensation for that. You see? Okay, so this is what what gives the Kopo practitioner the condition to um, have his body ready to attack as invincible um, way easily and quickly because he is already in such a position that allows him to Breathe, pro breathe properly and expanding from the from the hara enter very violently in Koko Jutsu. So from here we could easily enter or downward or using elbows or you see? But now returning to your question, um, the methods for getting into. There are many, we can see uh, one or two, okay? Suppose you have something quite big, someone quite big attacking you, so there is no way I could just enter. So the idea that if I am here, I will first allow him to move, and then using the tips as a very destructive means of finding um, breaches. So for example, slowly, okay? He will enter Atsuki. I will allow him to come and use his elbows. Now suppose he's here and suppose he will enter. You are you are there. Stop and I will enter and do your ski. Okay, you still you will stay still. Now if he enters violently, trying to knock me out, and he finds an elbow slowly. And he finds an elbow, or if he, one more time, if he comes and he almost reaches and finds an elbow, or suppose he, hey, by the way, in Popo we have to set our, our elbows horizontally, and we have to put ourselves diagonal to the enemy. For this matter, that is, he'll come, he will do a ski, for instance. I will allow him to just come very close, very close, and so he will stretch fully. And so he is already he already got in or into my own eye. So, so you see, from here already we have wires locked. You know? This means tearing, but at the same time. It's a very fragile angle, you know? So if we have this, if we have this, if we have this, membrane eye, membrane throat, membrane 
um, attacks, high attacks with, with tips, with elbows, say here, for example. And uh, suppose now we break once, now the idea of explosion here is precisely this. We have isolated this part of the body now, breaking once and then breaking again. See, there is no easy way to do what is called yokimi to protect himself. Once we are here, suppose we are here. Suppose we are here, and now when we are already here, there is no easy way for Okimi. So, let's, and with this elbow, I'll take his arm out so I can do it safely. But the idea in this, in this case, is to step over violently and keep on. So when we say that Kokujutsu is violent, it's because the idea is always based in a, a real confrontation, in a warlike situation. So there is no tapping, there is no... Mm, um, there is not the idea of being worried with his wellness, or no, with, his, with his well-being. And of course, this goes to all the, all the other war arts that we have, and hence, the huge importance of the Isaho respect etiquette.